Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name is Wilson Woodyard, a music composer and mixing engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to use take folders within Logic. So take folders are one of those things that I feel like are the most like underutilized and most likely to be confusing to people. So I'm going to take some time today to properly explain take folders, how to set them up, how to utilize them, and how to get the best results from them. So if that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'm going to get started. So starting from square one, absolute zero, a take folder is basically an audio file that has different versions or different alternates within it. So I'm going to start by showing you how to set it up because it'll make more sense than trying to explain it. So I put in a little drum loop here and I'm going to record bass over it. I'm going to get three different takes and do different things on each take. So I might do like a fingers take and a pick take and maybe a thumb take. This way we can get different sounds and clearly tell, you know, what the difference is as we're setting up this take folder and going through it. So I'm going to grab my bass and go ahead and track these take folders. So one thing you might want to check for if you go up to Logic Pro Preferences, Recording, and right here, you're going to want to look at basically what happens on overlapping track recordings for audio. So if these are not set to take folders, you might have an issue there. So make sure these are set to take folder. Basically, this will just tell Logic what happens when you record over an audio file, right? So I just like to automatically create take folders so I don't have to pack them later and we'll get into all that. But for now, make sure that's set to create take folder if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. And I'm going to grab a base and go ahead and put some takes on this. So now I'm going to do it again, but with maybe a pick this time. I'm just trying to get some variations and I'm going to do a slide kind of into the intro. Okay, I'm going to do one more and then I'll explain what's going on. So that last take was okay, and but that's the beauty of take folders is we can fix all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this so we can kind of see the audio a little bit better. Turn off my click because I left it on in one of my videos recently. Okay, um, take folders. Basically everything we just recorded is unpacked here. And if you don't see this, there's usually a little triangle on the take folder. So when it's just an audio region, you know, you don't have this little triangle or the three. But when it's a take folder, you get this little triangle, which opens and closes the folder. And then you have a little menu here with options pertaining to that take folder. Basically, everything you just recorded is in this folder, starting at take one or wherever you started and going all the way up. And you'll notice two of them are grayed out. And then we have one that's blue here. And if you look closer, the blue one is exactly what's represented on this main take folder track. And so basically what this allows you to do is go through and select either full takes or sections of each take and combine that into what's called a comp. And so a comp is a collection of takes. The easiest way to start to tackle this is you can just click. You need this little line tool, but you can just click a different take. So right now we have take two selected. And you'll see up at the top here, it says audio one, take two. And if I play it, you'll hear what I recorded on take two, which is the pick. Right. But if we click on take one here, then we'll go to the finger performance. And then take three is our mediocre thumb muted performance. Right. You can also change these by clicking right up here and hitting take one, two, and three. So that is the baseline level one. Like I recorded a few things and I want to pick a different take. If you want to take that to the next level, you get into what's called creating a comp. And so let's say I really liked this first performance, but I'm sad that I didn't do anything on the drum fill, right? So I want on take two, I did this little slide right here. 
And so I'm going to hover over take two and make sure I get this little double line tool looking thing. I don't know what it's actually called, but it looks like two little lines, two books on a bookshelf. And I'm going to click and drag to get this piece right here. So our master up here basically shows everything that's happening between the takes. So this is called comp A. And so now if I hit play, so it starts with the picked performance on the fret slide and then switches to the finger performance. Right, and if we listen to it though, it's not very clean like you hear it switch. There's like a weird thing here. And you can actually grab this comp point and move it around. And you'll see it automatically has crossfaded for you. So if you want to get the best sounding takes, like if you get nothing else from this video, learn this right here. You want to zoom in and move your cut to right before the next transient. So that means right before the next waveform starts. So your previous waveform is dying out. It's as small as it can get. And your next transient, your next sound has not started yet. That is the best possible point to comp something because you won't hear the change. Right? So if I hit play now, smooth. But if I put it somewhere, maybe like right here, that's a bad spot because we're interrupting this waveform and it's just going to... That's not what we want. Here's another example of a bad comp. If we wanted maybe, you know, the pick slide and the first note to be picked, but then after that we want to switch, we can zoom in and do the same thing here. So right there is kind of where it starts. See, we're looking right here. So just slightly before that. So that's how you get the cleanest takes. That's how you get the cleanest cuts when you're comping. So let's do that. And maybe halfway through, we'll switch back to pick, right? So I'll just switch back to pick right there. So I'll zoom in again, kind of click. You could also just click and drag the section that you want comped. So just play around with that and get the feel for choosing and selecting the takes you want within your comp. Okay, so now if you look, it starts on take one. When the pick slide happens, it goes to take two. The first note is on take two on the pick. And then we go back to the finger style performance. And then about halfway through, we switch back to the pick. Now, again, this is just for an example. I wouldn't recommend switching your bass tone like that in the middle of a line, but just to get the point across for this video, that's what we're doing there. So don't roast me in the comments about my bass choices. So in this little menu here, right now we're on comp A, and we can actually rename the comp if we want to. So I'm going to call this uh, bass slide comp. And now it says bass slide comp. And if you open this little menu, you have that right there. So say you did all that work and you're like, never mind. I just want take three. I just want the thumb muted performance. You can go right here. And you can also rename that take. So this is I'll call it thumb. thumb. And then we can go to pick two or take two, which is pick. And I'm going to rename that. And then we'll go to take one, which is finger style. Whoops. So I did not mean to do that. I'll explain that in a minute. Rename this. So now you can clearly see basically what's going on. You can close this. You can pick thumb, pick finger style, or your original bass slide comp. You can also come down here and hit here. We can duplicate that comp. So now we have a comp B. And let's say, you know what? I still like that, what I did on the bass slide thing, but I'd rather this first section be the thumb. You can simply click anywhere in that section. So if I want to change this whole blue part to a different track, you can easily click through that without affecting other stuff. So that, that was dirty right there. So let's clean that up by grabbing just another take, maybe from A right there. And then we'll end this one on the thumb. Kind of weird, but... 
Okay, so this is comp B, and we can go ahead and rename this. So we'll call this, uh, I don't know, thumb fix, whatever. Okay, so now if we open the menu, you have base slide comp, you have thumb fix, and you have all your original takes right there. It's good to build, kind of fix everything here how you want. And then when you're done and want this to just be a regular audio file, there's a few things you can do. So first is called flatten. Of course, there's, there's your regular utility stuff. You can duplicate any comps. You can duplicate takes. You know, all of that is, is pretty standard. You could delete the take, you know, rename it. I just showed you that. So flatten. Let me go back to our thumb fix. We'll say this is the best comp we've ever done. Um, if you hit flatten, it gets rid of the take folder. And basically you have just those individual audio regions and the crossfades. So if you want to get into it like you edit regular audio files, you can just flatten it. And then you still have these here. So if you want to mess with the crossfades or, or whatever, it's a lot easier to do it as audio files. Let me open it back up, undo rather. Um, you can hit flatten and merge. And this is going to flatten it and then create one complete audio file. So go ahead and like print all those things down. So if we listen to it now. So now it's our exact comp, but it's basically printed and committed all those changes together. So that's usually my preferred method. I get everything exactly how I want and double check it and then flatten it down. Let me keep backing up. Okay. Other options, you can export active comp to a new track or you can move active comp to a new track. So if we hit export comp to new track, it basically flattens it and creates a new track. So you can still have your original comp here. You know, you can mute it and say like old comp and then you have your new comp exported here. So that's something you can do. All of this is going to be dependent on kind of what you want to do with it. I'm just showing you the tools available within, you know, the, the take folders and the comping. So if we go back in here, the other one is unpack and unpack to new tracks or unpack to track alternatives. So unpack is going to basically create a bunch of new tracks with all of your different takes and comps. So up here we have the thumb fix comp, we have our original three takes and the bass slide comp all, it just, just spits it out into new tracks. And then you can unpack to new tracks and these are like not muted, they're live, they're ready to go. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless you, maybe you did a bunch of backing vocals in a track stack and you wanted those all to be, you know, separate. Like you're doing a gang vocal thing and you did like 20, then you could unpack them all the tracks and you're done. Unpack to track alternatives is going to put them all in different track alternatives here. This gets a little confusing to me. I don't use this personally because then you have to click through here and it named your track alternative something random. So, so A is the bass slide comp and B is the finger style. And then you'd have to go rename all those. So I don't personally prefer that. So that is you know, what you can do with those unpacking. Say you recorded all these separate, right? Like you did different tracks for like chorus vocals and you said, actually, I want to make a take folder so that I can comp all those together. Um, you can highlight all of them and then come down here to folder and you can either do folder or take folder. So take folder is what we just set up basically. So we've got, you know, our active comp here and then everything else down below. You can do it that way. I just usually prefer to record it as a take folder because it saves a step. Your other option is to pack a folder. And this is super confusing and I don't see the value in this. So if you use track folders or sorry, like region folders, let me know. I, it's kind of, it feels clunky to me. I'd rather either have kind of a track stack folder or just a take folder because this puts them all into one thing and then you can double click to open double click to close, but it just kind of feels clunky to me. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Other than that, that's about all there is to the take folders. Like they're not that in depth of a topic. However, in most, I don't want to say amateur, but in most like beginner or intermediate sessions, uh, this is one of the issues I see the most of is people 
not knowing what to do with their take folders or like accidentally creating them. And then th- one of the things I don't like about take folders is you can't actually fade the region, right? So if I pack a take folder, usually I like to fade out all my audio regions, right? So if you cut this, um, you, you can't fade it out. But if it's a full region, so let me uh, flatten and merge here. If it's a regular audio file, audio region, you can fade it and do your regular audio region things to it. So that's one of the drawbacks of having it in a take folder and not unpacking it or dealing with it. So, you know, if it's something that freaks you out, just don't <laughs> don't record over your stuff. Or if you do, just immediately flatten those take folders so you're not dealing with that bumpiness. But again, I would recommend using them because they're very powerful and they're honestly great for getting professional vocals because you can go in there and like, I like that word, but I didn't like that word. And honestly, that is what Pro Studios are doing. They're using some form of take folders, whether it's in Logic or Pro Tools or whatever software, they're using them. So if you do want that professional edge, like that competitive edge to things, I would strongly recommend learning track stacks. Ah, Take folders, I keep saying it. I hope that video was helpful. If you have any further questions about take folders or Logic Pro in general, feel free to ask down in the comments. Also, if you're interested in booking a one-on-one coaching call with me to learn more about Logic Pro, music production, mixing, and more, I'll have a link for that down in the description for you to go check out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Also, like and subscribe. I think I said that, but if not, that really helps the channel to grow and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much.